If you're like me, you've been waiting a while for Neoxa to release their Node project. This is testnet, it's not mainnet, it's not incentivized, and there's quite a few steps to follow to get this up and running. It's not hard, but you definitely wanna make sure that you follow each and every single step. The steps that I'm using is straight out of the official guide. I'll make sure I link that in the description below. And I've added timestamps to the video, so if you've missed anything, you can jump back and forth whenever needed. There's two things that you're gonna to need to get this up and running. The first is gonna be a Windows PC for the wallet. The second is gonna be a low spec system running Ubuntu. Now you can do this on almost any PC. The minimum requirement is just one gig of RAM and one CPU core. I'm gonna be using a VPS service by Racknerd because it's reliable and it's really cheap, but you can use anything you want. Let's go ahead and start by installing the wallet. Okay, so I'm at my Windows 11 desktop. I'm gonna open up my browser and I'm at the GitHub page for Neoxa and I'll make sure I link this in the description below. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit to get to the download file. So they have a Linux version and a Windows version. We're gonna be downloading the Windows version. So let that download. It's about 70 megs in size. We'll open it to extract it. We're gonna go ahead and click on extract all. I'll extract all the files on my desktop so it's easy to see. And then we'll go ahead and let that happen. Okay, so once you have everything extracted, the first thing that you wanna do is launch the wallet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So you get this Windows protect message. So have to click on more info and then run anyway. And uh, we're gonna be using the default directory. If space is an issue, you can change the drive by selecting a custom directory. Other than that, you can just click on okay. And now it wants to put in a recovery phrase. You can go ahead and put in whatever recovery phrase that you want, or you can generate one right now, which I'll do. So we get this warning that says to make sure that you encrypt your wallet and delete all non-encrypted backup files after you verify that the wallet works. So we're gonna go ahead and let this wallet load up it's gonna try syncing with the blockchain. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close the wallet right now, exit out of the wallet so we can make a small edit. So I can click on the file and then I'm gonna say exit and it's gonna shut down. So now what we wanna do is navigate to the folder where our files are. So I'm gonna go into my PC, then I'm gonna go into the C drive. Inside the C drive, I'm gonna go into the user folder and then you're gonna go into the user profile that you're using. Mine's gonna be Geekwire over here. Next, we wanna find the app data folder, double click on that. And then we wanna go into the roaming folder and then we wanna go into the Neoxa core. Inside here, we're gonna be looking for the config file. So there it is, just double click on it. And we'll be using notepad. The only thing that we have to enter in here is test net equals one. Then we can save this and we can exit it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and close out of all my windows and I'm gonna open up my wallet again. Okay, so now we can go up to the settings and then options. And then under the wallet tab, we can have the show smart nodes tab. So we're gonna check that and it's gonna ask us to restart. We'll just click on okay. And what I'll do is I'm gonna exit out of here again. Go ahead and exit out. Okay, and now I'm gonna relaunch the Neoxa core wallet. And I'm gonna hide this. It's gonna be syncing with the blockchain. And now we get the smart nodes tab, which was not there before. It's syncing headers right now. That is everything we need to do for the Windows wallet. Now let's go over and set up our Ubuntu server. The first thing I'm gonna do is open up Putty. The Putty is a free download. I'll make sure I link that in the description below. And here we go. Make this a little bit bigger so you can see it properly. And let's begin. So the first thing is we wanna make sure we're running it as root. So we'll type that in, enter. So now we're writing as root. Wanna make sure that the VPS is up to date and we're gonna be installing fail to ban. Go and hit enter and that'll go ahead and install it. So now we'll see if the server has an active swap file. If it doesn't, we'll create one. We're gonna paste in this line and then hit enter. Looks like there's one, we'll create one anyway. Next, we're gonna be opening up port 4570. Paste that line in, hit enter, and we'll say yes. We might get disconnected. Firewall is active, enabled on startup. So the firewall is active, it's enabled on startup. Let's go ahead and reboot. So we'll go ahead and paste that in there and it's gonna disconnect me and I'll be logging right back in in just a moment. And now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna download the testnet wallet. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste in that line. I'm gonna expand this a bit so you can see it clearly. Okay, just expand that and hit enter. And now the wallet is installed. Now we just need to unzip the wallet. And now we just need to give some permissions to open the wallet. So that takes care of the configuration for the SmartNet node. We're gonna go jump back into our desktop wallet and we're gonna get a new wallet address. So I'm back inside my Windows 11 PC and I'm back inside my core wallet. What I wanna do is go up here to the tools menu and then go into information. We wanna go into the console area and then we're gonna type in get new address. So get new address, there you go, it pops up and then we're gonna hit enter and it's gonna supply us with a new address. All right, so I just copied my address 
I'm gonna go back over into the main window, click on send. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna jump onto the Discord. So I just jumped onto the Discord server. I requested some test tokens in the master node section and they've just sent it to me. So I'm gonna go back into my overview. I have 61,000 T Neox. These are test tokens this is meant to use for testing and that's what we're gonna be doing right now. So I'm gonna go back into the send section. I have my address in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be sending 60,000 to this address that I just created. I'm gonna click on send and I get a prompt over here to make sure I want to send it. And I'll say yes to that. And you can see that it's been sent. And what we wanna do is get a copy of the transaction ID. So we're gonna go into the transaction section right over here and it's called payment to myself. So it's right over here. Okay, so this is when the fun part begins. The, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our notepad and I'm gonna be pasting in a template that we're using. Now this template is on the website. We're gonna be looking for the transaction ID, which is gonna be this section right over here, putting in the transaction ID. So the transaction ID is what we had Right over here, it's the payment to yourself. We're gonna right click on that. We're gonna copy the transaction ID. And then back here inside their text file, we're gonna be pasting it in, uh, keeping it inside the quotations. And next what we wanna do is go back to our output console window. So we're gonna go back over here. We're gonna go up to tools, information, and then we're gonna go inside the console. So inside here, we're gonna be typing in smart node smart node outputs and then hit enter okay and our output is one so we're going to go back over here and where it says output i'm just going to highlight that and i'm going to replace it with one again we're leaving the quotations as they are the next thing that we want to do is get the server ip and port the server ip address is going to be the ip address of the vps service that you're using or the WAN ip address of your router if you're doing this at home so i'm going to go ahead and put in my ip address okay so i just typed mine in the port is gonna be the port that we just opened up. If you're doing this at home, you wanna make sure that this port is opened up on your router and pointed to the PC that's hosting it. The port that we're using is 4570. And the last part is the fee address. Now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be creating a new wallet address and I'm gonna be sending myself one Neoxa. The reason why I'm doing this is because I need a separate fee address. Inside transactions, you can see that the one Neoxa I sent has been produced and it's listed right here. I'm gonna go up to tools and information and then inside console, I'm gonna type in list address balances. Here's the transaction. I'm just gonna highlight and copy the address. Now I'm gonna jump back over to my notepad and paste in that address. Now we're gonna highlight and copy this entire command. Jump back over to our console window. We're gonna paste it in and then hit enter. Within this output, we're looking for the Neoxa config file. We're gonna highlight this entire path and copy it. I'm gonna open up my file explorer and then the address bar, I'm gonna paste it up here at the top and then hit enter. In the configuration file, we're looking for the section that says daemon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight this, we'll delete it, and then we're gonna type in testnet. So we're gonna keep this handy because we're gonna need this in just a moment. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be jumping back over to our VPS server. All right, so I'm back on my VPS server. I'm gonna be pasting in the line. And now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating the Neoxa config file. So go ahead and hit enter. And now we just need to edit it. And I'm gonna paste that in here and uh, it's gonna open up Nano so we can edit the configuration file. I'm switching over to my Windows PC. I'm gonna highlight and copy the commands and then jump back onto the VPS. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be pasting that in and here it is. The next thing that we wanna do is we're gonna be hitting Control X to exit Nano, and it wants to know if you want to save it, so we'll type in Y to save it, and then hit Enter, and that's been saved. Okay, we're on step 24. We're almost done. The next thing that we have to do is just type in screen. We're gonna be creating a new screen inside Ubuntu. So I'll go ahead and type that in, hit Enter. Okay, so screen's not there. I'm just gonna quickly install that. Okay, that's done. Now let's go ahead and type in screen. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put in one of the last commands here, and this is so we can see what's happening. Whenever we wanna exit the screen safely, we just have to hold down Control, hit A, and then press D, and that will exit us out. And we have just created the testnet node for Neoxa. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please smash that like button. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.